Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, let us see the next concepts of module 4 that is error management and the different techniques available and then different antennas. In the previous video, we have seen radio signal transmission that is multiple access techniques used in wireless transmission that is FDMA, CDMA and uh, TDMA techniques and multipath and fading concepts we have discussed. Now let us see error management. Due to noise and interference, there will be a chance of occurrence of error in the transmission. Suppose if you are transmitting a digital signal like this, due to some error, there might be a chance of bit flip occurs and this will be read as at the receiver like this. This one will be read as zero. If this is the case, it is bad enough in the voice calls and also damaging the information in the web pages and also in data transfers, something like emails and all. So we need to address this issue correctly at the receiver end so that error will be mitigated and the corrected code word is generated at the receiver. So here let us discuss forward error correction as well as automatic repeat request methods to mitigate this error. In forward error correction we are going to use a method called generating a code word. What is code word means if the information what we are transmitting is of three bits like this. Let me write it as one, two, three. So three bits we are trying to transfer. This three bit of information will be converted into nine bit of information. So here we can observe the code word what we have here of nine bits. We are converting this three bit information into nine bits by adding some extra redundant bits. These redundant bits are required at the receiver to recover the information correctly. Using these redundant bits, receiver will come to know what actually the information sender has sent. If suppose, if there is any bit flip occurs like this, due to the error, this one is changed to zero and receiver is going to get this code word at the receiver. What happens here? If the receiver will be having a error correction and coding method, it will detect this error and correct this error by flipping from 0 to 1 at the receiver. So this should happen then only the transmitted keyword 101 will be received at the receiver as information correctly. Otherwise there will be other data transmitted to the receiver. So we need to understand forward error correction method here how it is going to correct the error. In this block diagram you can see there is a transmitter and receiver it is going to have a process of converting this information into 9 bits. Before that we need to understand the coding rate. What do you mean by coding rate means the number of information bits divided by number of transmitted bits. So information bits what we have in our example is 3 and divided by number of transmitted bits means that is the code word that is 9 it will be equal to 1 by 3. So 1 by 3 is the coding rate we are using here. So the receiver also uses the same coding rate to get the information back. This method carries two stages, stage 1 as well as stage 2. In the first stage, there is a fixed rate encoder. Here if you take an LTE that is 4G that uses turbo encoding method with an encoding rate of 1 by 3. This is the first stage encoding. In the second stage, the rate matching stage. Here some of the coded bits are transferred and remaining bits are discarded. This will be called as puncturing. Here you can see in the block diagram 101 is the information to be transmitted. This is given to the encoder. The turbo encoding is going to encode and generates a code word of these many bits. And here the rate matching unit is going to puncture the code word like this. The two bits are discarded. This code word will be transmitted by the modulator and the transmitter to the destination. Receiver is going to receive this code word as it is like this. This receiver will come to know that there are no two bits over here and dummy insertion is going to happen here. The code word will be generated by adding the two dummy variables like this and there will be an error correction module at the receiver. It is going to retrieve the information 101 as it is at the output. So receiver also having a puncturing algorithm so that it will understand what is the method transmitter is going to use and receiver adds those dummy bits where the discarded bit location is there and again pass through the turbo encoder 
to get the information back. Then the next concept is automatic repeat request. This automatic repeat request is called as ARQ technique. Here this is also an error, error management technique. We will be having a transmitter at one end and the receiver at other end. Transmitter will be having the data to be transmitted that will be called as data. This data will be given to compute the CRC bits. What is CRC? CRC is a extra information we are going to add with the data that is called as cyclic redundancy check bits. These check bits are going to be included with the information what we are supposed to send. Here you can observe there is data up to here and at the end we are going to add it CRC bits. And this complete code word will be given to the modulator for the modulation and it will be transmitted through the antenna. At the receiver, after uh, the code word is received, there is a demodulation occurs. After the demodulation, we are going to get the data and the CRC bits as it is. Once the receiver is going to get the two fields like this, here it is going to compute the CRC. If the computed CRC bit and the CRC what it is expected is same, then it concludes that information is received correctly. If the information is not received correctly, the CRC is not going to match. Then it will send a acknowledgement as NACK. ACK is the acknowledgement it will be sent when the information is correctly received and CRC is matched and it is going to send NACK negative acknowledgement when there is a code word not matched. So here this automatic repeat request is going to transmit an acknowledgement called ACK as well as NACK to the transmitter. So transmitter can resend the data if it is required. So generally wireless communication system uses combination of these two. It combines the two error management techniques. So the system corrects most of the bit errors by using a forward error correction and then uses an automatic repeat request to handle the remaining errors. So then we can achieve a 100% correct transmission in the data. Next one is antennas. As we know, antenna is a device that converts an electromagnetic radiation in space into electrical currents and electrical current into an electromagnetic radiation. Why? Because we are going to use antennas in wireless transmission where we are going to use radio waves. These radio waves are going to transmit through air in an electromagnetic radiation. So at the transmitter antenna, we need to have current signals and that should be converted into electromagnetic radiation. At the receiving antenna, we will be having an electromagnetic radiation in the air that should be converted into an electrical current. So these two functionality this receiving and trans transmitting antenna is going to do. And what are the features of the antenna? How we are going to choose the particular antenna means we need to look at the radiation pattern of an antenna and intensity of the radiation it is going to generate and benefit and the direction of the antenna and then effective aperture, the gain, power gain, radiation efficiency, effective length, polarization of the antenna and bandwidth are the different parameters or the features an antenna will be having. And the different types of antennas we are going to see that is omnidirectional, dipole, collinear omni antennas, then directional antennas, patch antennas, patch array antennas and yagi antennas. Let us see one by one. What is omnidirectional antenna? It is a circular pattern in a given plane. It is going to radiate in equal power in all the directions perpendicular to the axis of the antenna. And examples are dipole antenna as well as collinear antennas. Let us see the dipole antenna. Dipole antenna has two metallic rods here. You can observe here these two are the metallic rods the dipole antenna will be having through which the current and frequency will flow. Here you can see this is the antenna rod. A aluminum rod we can see and this is what the transmission line and this dipole antenna mostly referred as half wavelength dipole that is what the lambda by 2 you can observe here and the application of these dipole antenna is used in the radio as well as TV receivers. The next thing is collinear antenna. Here it is consisting of series or array of dipole elements. You can see here, here it is consisting of array of dipole elements. These are, this is what the collinear omni antenna you can see. So these dipoles are parallel to each other and one after the other it is connected. That is what the meaning of collinear means. It is lying or passing through a same straight line. 
this type of collinear antenna will be having high gain and high gain implies the same power radiated in a more focused way and application of these antennas are used in the base station for uh, dispatcher for the police fire ambulance and taxi services are going to use these collinear antennas the next one is directional antennas these directional antennas sends and receive large signals only in one direction that is forward direction you can see here the forward direction is shown in this directional antenna where the signal is going to be transversed and here it will be having one main loop and several side loops this is what the main loop uh, in one direction and also the side loops you can observe here in this diagram so these are available in different shapes and the examples are dish antenna as well as horn antenna this these uh, dish antennas we have observed in uh, tv television broadcasting and uh, reception of tv signals and then patch antenna patch antenna is a simplest form of single rectangular conductive plate here you can see this is the rectangular conductive plate we will be having so this will be the ground plate above that there will be an rectangular plate fixed so these antennas are attractive due, due to their case of fabrication and it is widely used in portable wireless devices and then we will be having patch array antennas patch array antenna is simply a patch antenna where we will be having multiple patch antennas connected together and it consisting of uh, patches arranged in the order of rows and columns you can observe here in the rows and column method these antennas are going to be connected and these antennas are going to give high gain and then yagi antenna yagi antenna is again a directional antenna that radiates signals in one main direction that's why we need to set the direction of the antenna to receive the maximum signal so it consists of a long transmission line with a single driven element consisting of two rods connected either side of the antenna line the two sides will be having rods connected either side of a transmission line and this typical antenna has a reflect one reflector and one or more directors this is what the different types of antennas we have and we are going to use these antennas in a particular application thank you